Hello and welcome back. Uh, you know, so we're actually going to be continuing looking at, uh, you know, actually hard drives now. So this is actually a component that, you know, we kind of don't really think about too much unless we're running out of storage. You know, so a hard drive is a very important part of our system because it is what stores all our data and stores the operating system as well. So, you know, it's a very important part. So, you know, we're going to look at, you know, different types of hard drives, um, you know, interfaces and components of hard drives as well. And we're also going to look at the way, like, technology has gone with hard drives as well. Um, so let's jump into the slides and start looking at hard drives. So, you know, as I said, you know, hard drives, the technology really hasn't changed much. So, you know, though within, I would say, the last several years, the technology is rapidly changing, but prior to that, the technology cha didn't change much, and we always had these mechanical hard drives where we actually had moving parts. And so if you think about you know, our mechanical hard drives, they actually use, uh, they're, they're used to store data, and they do it magnetically. Um, and data is stored as either a zero or a one. And as well, you know, the density is how tightly packed this data can be stored. So the more dense, the more tightly packed we can have this data. So, you know, Looking at hard drives, it's important to understand like certain terminology within a hard drive. So let's look at you know the, some components of a hard drive. So the first component we'll uh, you know we'll look at is you know the platter, and the platter um, you know within a hard drive, it will contain several of these, and these are stacked vertically. And as well, we have a track, and the track is basically think of it as just a circular ring on the platter, and then we have sectors. And the sectors, these are tracks, um, these are what tracks are divided into. So you can see, you know, we have the platter, which is kind of like, you know, the big picture. Then track is kind of like focusing in more. And then a sector is part of a track. So, you know, those three, it's kind of getting more specific as we move in. Um, so, you know, that's kind of important to understand what those, com what the terminology of those are and where they reside. So we have a couple more terms that we should look at. So let's jump back in and kind of look at the remaining terms. So the next one is a cylinder. And so what you think of a cylinder is this kind of goes vertical now. So this actually runs um, through each track of the stacked platter. So your cylinder is kind of more vertical. And then you have um, you know, a component of your hard drive that's called the head. And you actually have um, two of these. You have a read-write um, and what this does is the read-write heads actually um, read and writes data to the platter. So it's a way, this is what is used to pull data off or put data into your hard drive to store it. And finally, we have our actuator arm. And what this does is this actually moves the read-write heads around to the proper location. So, you know, it's important to understand, you know, that the cylinder now, instead of looking at like a single platter, we're looking, you know, vertically as well. And then we have our read write heads, which is what we use to pull data and write data um, to our hard drive. And then the actuator arm is what moves the head around so that it is able to um, you know, pull the data off um, from the proper location as well. So now you know, let's jump back in and let's look at an image of this so you can see more you know, visibly how this looks. Let's look at um, you know, the hard drive parts. So we have uh, you know, four platters. And then from here, you know, we have eight heads. So each platter has its read-write head. So you can see that we have all these as well. And then, you know, we have our um, tracks and cylinders here that you can see as well. So there's your track and cylinder as well. Um, if you were thinking vertically, if you had multiple ones stacked, you know, that track would be run through each one giving you a cylinder. Um, and so you can kind of visually see why we call it a cylinder as well. So, you know, those are kind of your, your parts of a hard drive as well. Um, so kind of understand what they are, where they reside, and kind of like, you know, the, um, what they're used for as well. So now with hard drives, one of the problems with our mechanical hard drives is that we have these moving parts. And so you don't want to like really jostle the hard drive around or, you know, drop it or anything like that. So, you know, it's important to make sure that, you know, you don't really um, kind of like move it around, jostle it quickly. You know, you want to kind of treat it nicely as well because, you know, with that arm moving, you know, you can actually cause something called a head crash, which I do have an image to show you. But, 
you know, these hard drives, they're spinning really fast. I mean, a lot of common lap, um, laptop drives run at about 5,400 RPMs. So that's about 5,400 revolutions per minute. So just imagine how fast those um, platters are spinning if they're doing that many revolutions a minute. And that's actually on the slower side. They actually have ones upwards of 10,000 RPMs per minute that you could see in higher end systems as well. So just imagine, um, you know, these read-write heads as well, they're, they're very close to um, the platters. You won't, you, the human eye would not be able to see the gap. It's that fine of, um, of a gap between the read-write heads and the platters. So you can see that just a little bit of a sudden movement could actually cause that read-write head to actually hit the platter. And when that happens, it's called a head crash. So let's jump into the slides and actually see um, what this head crash is all about. So um, as well, you can see that the, the head has hit the um, hard drive, and you can see that nice ring that's been formed. You know, you would think, well, it only hit it really quickly, but it's spinning at such a rapid pace that, you know, it's going to create that entire circle is just going to be ruined. So you basically with doing this, you pretty much, you've ruined your hard drive um, as well. So keep that in mind. And, you know, as well, our hard drives, we have different interfaces as well that we can use with our hard drives. So let's kind of look at some of the interfaces that we have as well. So one of the older ones that we have of hard drive interfaces is actually our um, parallel ATA. So this is one of the ones that you know we used to use. We don't really see it much in use anymore. Another one is our SATA, also called serial ATA. And then another one is um, SCSI. So these are different um, interfaces that we can have. So let's kind of quickly look at um, some of the um, you know, specifics of each one of these. So the first one, Parallel ATA, you know, this was actually created in 1986 by Western Digital. And you could see that the transfer speeds were, you know, not that impressive. You know, the maximum transfer speed it would have is 133 megabits per second. And the maximum number of devices that could be supported is two. Um, you know, so that's not that impressive with how many, you know, hard drives you could have off of, uh, you know, using Parallel ATA. And as well, they had 40 pin cables. So these cables, they were two rows of 20. So the cables were actually pretty thick. You know, I would say that the cables were probably, you know, about that thick or so. Uh, you know, and when you had these running throughout your system, they actually prevented, you know, airflow from happening. So your components didn't allow the air to circulate and cool things off that well. So they were kind of like, they weren't nice. And when you were trying to make the inside of your system look pretty, it didn't work too well. So we actually, uh, um, recently we've gotten to this new uh, technology called Serial ATA SATA. And this has actually been a great improvement as well. So let's go and look at the slide and see why it's a great improvement. So you can see that, you know, Serial ATA, as I said, it's kind of newer. So it was actually created in uh, 2003 by the Serial ATA International Organization. And, you know, if you recall that with um, Parallel ATA, the transfer speeds were only in the you know, megabits per second. Now with zero ATA, we're in the gigabits per second. So you can see that the transfer speed has gotten a lot faster. Though with zero ATA, each cable can only support one device. Though, you know, that's not too bad because we actually can have more zero ATA interfaces as well on our, on our motherboards. So it's not that um, big of a problem to really have. And as well, the cables actually became a seven pin cable. So the cables were probably, if you think about like the width of like your, one of your fingers, that's about the width of this cable. So within our systems, we could have this cable and it actually helped, you know, enhance the airflow because the cables weren't as big. So it actually would keep our air flowing moving through our system and, you know, that helps keep our components a little um, cooler as well. So now let's jump back into the slides and we're gonna look at another one called SCSI. And SCSI, we really don't see much in um, like the end user um, you know, systems. These are more like your higher end systems as well that you would see these in. So let's jump into the slides and look at SCSI for a little bit. So SCSI, um, you know, this stands for your small computer system interface as well. And this was actually created in 1978 by someone named Larry Brocher. And basically, you know, he worked for um, 
Sugar Associates, and Adaptech. So you will see a lot of SCSI um, devices, you know, and interfaces are Adaptech. And you can see that, you know, early on that this actually had some pretty decent transfer speed um, compared to even parallel ATA, but the SCSI devices were a lot more expensive. So that's why we really didn't see it introduced much in a lot of consumer devices as well, because it was a lot more expensive. And as well, the maximum number of devices, it actually varies. So you, you can have like two, three, four, five, you know, several devices on the same cable as well. And the connectors, there was also several different types of connectors as well. On um, these cables, they were, you know, on the kind of like on the same um, size aspect as the parallel ATA. But, you know, SCSI provided us with better performance, better speed as well. So, you know, it was great because of that as well, you know, because it did give us, you know, faster speeds. Um, you know, but we've been moving away from these types of hard drives that are mechanical, and we've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, drives out there that are called solid states. So let's jump into the slides and look at solid state drives quickly. And one of the benefits of a solid state drive is that we actually don't have any moving parts. It's all electronic. So due to this, we don't have to worry about a head crash. And this actually uses a new interface called SATA Express. And as I said, you know, this is kind of a newer technology that it was released in 2003. And you can see that the transfer speed, it's a pretty fast transfer speed as well. And as I mentioned already, we don't have to worry about head crashes. It's a solid state drive. There are no moving components within it. So, you know, that's a huge benefit. And as well as solid state drives, they don't take up as much power. So, you know, Hopefully this was a, you know, you learned a little bit about hard drives and hard drive technology. So thanks and we'll see you next time.